Hello, hello again, everybody, and welcome to Loose Lips. I am Ben Random, your host, and I'm going to be inviting our next guest on very shortly. Once they come to the group, I'll be able to request them, and then we'll be having our chat. So today's chat is going to be with Dan. He is the drummer of Liam Gallagher's band. He's also involved with uh, a lot of the production and the writing on the albums as well. So we're going to be seeing how he came to be and then also how he became immersed in the world. That is Liam Gallagher as well. Um, he's in the group, so we'll see what he's got to say. Also, any of these loose lips, so I just spoke with director and photographer before, Danny DeVille. That's going to be up on my live for the next 24 hours. And then all the other chats as well, which I've got today. So with Ralph Lawson from 2020 Recordings, 2020 Visions, uh, the record label, and also any City Electronic. And then Ben Bowers, who is a specialist guitar spec, uh, tech rather, for uh, Rival Sons. He is uh, going to be on, so all the chats that I do, they'll be up on my YouTube channel and everyone who's been featured, I'll send them on directly to them so that they can send them out so you can watch again. Uh, Dan, if you want to send me a um, request and then we can get the ball rolling, man. Shout out everybody who's in the group as well. Shout out Rock and Roll Cy Martin. Yes, my brother. Uh, Gavin89. And Jacko, yes, Jack, mate. Respect, brother. Any ID for life, he knows. Right, Doug sent me a request, so I'll just... Technology. Hey, oh. Is that working? It is, mate, it is. You're in. Oh, you lovely. Look. You, yeah, how are you? Oh, my headphones don't work on that. I, I've, I've never done this before. I feel like a, an, a, an old man. <laughs> Do you know what? It's so crazy, right? Because <laughs> my brother always says to me, like, why don't you wear headphones? The mics don't, you know, it doesn't, but it just feels weird. I just want it to be <clears throat> just like, you know, we're not, we're not, I want it to be like a chat, like a FaceTime chat where it's like, wait, look at that, look out the window, there's a pigeon shitting on another. Like, just stuff <laughs> like that. Yeah, sure. But, but, uh, but uh, thank you, thank you for joining us. No worries at all. I mean, there's nothing else to do, is there? So uh, might as well talk about some stuff. How have you found it? Because um, were you in the middle of a tour schedule at all? Yeah, kind of. We were having a bit. We we're having a bit of downtime, um, and it's sort of yeah. It, we we were kind of just off the end of a European tour, so we'd actually just come out of the back of going through the just the start of the madness, um, February, to the point where even we'd been to northern Italy. Uh, so we're all a bit like, oh, crap. If any of us, if we're all feeling all right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, no one got it. So, uh, well, as far as I know, we're all fine. Old crew, old band. Um, so it's, yeah, it's been weird. So they, oh, yeah, lots of stuff's got cancelled or postponed, or you know, I'm sort of, we're all a bit clueless to as to what's going on because no one really knows what's going on, do they? Um, yeah, I suppose that's the craziness. Is the, it's the uncertainty, isn't it? But it's one of those which has just got to be ridden out, really. Yeah, yeah. At least we're, we're all in the same boat, really. Uh, I think that I think that it's going to show a collective unity between us because we're all going through the same thing. Like yeah. it doesn't really matter your, your position or stature or race or gender or anything like that. We're all going through the same thing, and I real I'd really like to think that there's like a united like acknowledgement of that. After I just wouldn't like it to be after this, like just going back to how it was. I think we really should like acknowledge what we're all sort of going through and what we have got through. I think it will do that. I think it's going to change the way people do everything. Um, you know, even going to gigs, I'm not sure even gigs will happen immediately after this is all over because there'll, there'll probably be even like a ban on mass gatherings and, you know, we'll have to see day by day how it kind of works. But, um, yeah, interesting times, that's for sure. <laughs> Hopefully with a lot of positive outcomes anyway, like you're saying. No, definitely, definitely. So, how have you how have you managed to sort of occupy through this time yourself through this time? Is it is it one of those where you feel like you have to be creative, or is it because you've been on road so long? It's just nice to sort of recuperate. Yeah, there's definitely a, the downtime's been nice, but now I'm starting to go a bit mental. Um, <clears throat> luckily, I, I live because uh, I do sort of songwriting and production and stuff like that. I have my studio's like a 15 minute cycle ride. So I just jump on the bike and I've been kind of doing that while they're figuring out how much you have to stay at home. 
Um, but the loophole. I, yeah. Well, I can't really work from home, so I, I kind of have to go into work. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, bit bit of that. A bit of trying to walk a bit when we're allowed to. Uh, there are some parks near. Where I live with my girlfriend. We just go for a walk every now and then. Try and keep our sanity in check. Is your girlfriend yeah. a photographer? She took an amazing photo of you just sort of on your laptop. Crying, like, that was a really good shot. <laughs> no, she's she's just got a good eye. She works in fashion. Uh, so I guess, yeah, the, the visuals are her, her job. <laughs> so, yeah, I wonder if you're just going on your walks, you're just capturing, like, squirrels playing, like, hopscotch. <laughs> No, there's lots of dogs around trying to catch squirrels. That's that's pretty pretty cool. Well, it's mad, isn't it? Because like, did you see that in Wales where the rams are like coming to the the village and like taking over? No. Yeah, so like, because I just think all the animals are sort of like, what's going on? Is it is it our turn now? And they're just running rampant around like there's, all like the village centres. There are definitely a lot more birds singing in the mornings around here in London. That that's a definite thing we can notice just opening the door in the morning. Like, bloody hell. It feels it's like seaside. Quiet. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's quite nice. And the sky is always blue. I don't know. If someone else said that. Has someone else not, uh, noted that, like, the sky is always blue? Do you think it is because there's obviously a lack <clears> of <throat> transport and uh, a, a lockdown in there? Uh, I, I think it could be. I mean, like, yeah, the uh, the seasons are obviously changing all the time. But, like, outside outside the window, it's just gorgeous. And we, we've been having that for about two weeks, I think. Fair. Yeah, can't complain. Nah, mate, that, that's a really, really valid, valid point. So, obviously, when you go into the studio, have you, have you got anything that's on, that it's, you know, developing, or is it just stuff from scratch at the minute? Uh, is it the, your own stuff as well, or for other artists, or is it for Liam as well? It's mo mostly, it's other artists. I don't really do my own thing uh, anymore. I did back in the day when I was at uni and studied music, but um, no, it's, I prefer working with other artists, mostly. Um, so it's a kind of a experiment with a couple of people. If we could um, get some writing going or production ideas whilst we're all in this lockdown scenario. Um, so yeah, it's just it's, it's an experiment, but it's going well. Some sort of idea thrown back and forth. Or I've got a songwriting session tomorrow with a guy, a new artist called Gabe Coulter. So we're going to try and do that over Zoom and see if that that works. I've n I've never really tried that before, so this is going to it's going to be a... Zoom. Zoom's interesting. I think if there's yeah. two of you, it'll be all right. But uh, we did a surprise birthday party for a friend about yeah. two weeks ago. And there was about 30 of us all. And basically what it does is you've got your different squares. And whoever speaks the loudest or the most, it focuses on. So you've know, just got yeah. loads of people just peering through it. Everyone's just like peckering away, trying to get like a word in to be heard. Well, we've um, been doing that with a family. We're doing like a quiz every uh, Sunday. And I've noticed that if you're shouting out answers or something, no one can hear anyone anyway. So it's sort of overlapped a bit too, it's, it's, too it's, often. I think we're going to come out at least with manners of listening and knowing how to wash our hands. If anything, if anything, the basics. Like I thought those were the basics, but that's what we'll all uh, have a degree in after. The, I'll tell you what I'll have a degree <laughs> in, uh, watching YouTube tutorials on, on stuff like OBS, like trying to do like live streams. And it's just, it's madness. I thought we were going to say YouTube videos and how to wash your hands. <laughs> no, to, you know, because there's these different songs, right? So everyone's coming up with different jingles. Like if you sing happy birthday, that's like the length of time you should wash your hands. I actually do my own quiz and I do it like it's a mix between the chase and the mighty boosh. So okay. uh, I've got like quirky questions. But one of the rounds I have is like a bonus round where I play what's in my sink. So as I head over to my sink, I, I do a little jingle like what's in my sink? What's in my sink? What's in my sink? And then you've got 30 seconds to guess what's in my sink. And then okay. I've got a jingle about how you wash your hands. So it's like, girl, I'm going to wash your hands so you won't get no germs no more. So you won't <laughs> die. So let me wash them. Wash them, wash them some more. I'll wash it, wash your hands. I'll wash it, wash it, wash, 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 wash your hands, wash them. So uh, there you go. Well, you really know how to keep yourself entertained, don't you, Ben? <laughs> me and me cat me cat don't know what's going on me cat thinks it's her house she's like what are you doing here all the time it's just you and your cat then your your spot yeah yeah so you go you just you go mad as well or you, you, no, do you, you know what i am um, i lost i'm not gonna lie i had 18 hours of a proper breakdown because i watched uh my friends told me to watch a show called utopia 
I don't know if you remember that. It was on a Channel yeah. 4 back 2013 and 2014. Yeah. Really good show, really well shot, quirky. And um, it basically was a bit of a template to what's happening now. So I started going down the wrong rabbit hole. I was like, no, 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 we don't want to go down there. So then um, <laughs> I'm now on the one of just, we don't know what's going to happen. But as long as I can connect and make people smile and just like, yeah. I really believe I've got a responsibility of like, raising the spirits and the positivity of people's souls at this time so i'm just looking for different avenues so yeah why not man? really just that right one, getting better at me djing getting better at like beat matching and that that's yeah. me those are my goals <laughs> what, those vinyl? Are my goals. The vinyl no like... brother i wish i've got uh some uh pioneers just uh, yeah, yeah, talking yeah. about just yeah usb in usb in all the way so let's get back to you then, man. So, like, you, you, when you went to a college or uni, as you said before, was it yeah. studying music then? Yeah, yeah. I was at the Leeds College of Music. Really? Leeds, Leeds, Leeds. <laughs> so is that where you met Harry? Yeah, Harry Johns, yeah. We were, yeah, we were in a band while I was there studying called Wingman, um, which was like a three-piece sort of punk rock trio outfit. Uh, I was playing bass. Harry was singing. And our mate John was drumming. But yeah, we'd sort of just go around the sort of pub and club circuit in Leeds and uh, jump off stuff and smash things up. <laughs> so where, where are you originally from? Uh, Hertfordshire. So Hatfield, St Albans Way. Uh, just north of London, yeah. So you moved up and then did how did you find Leeds? Because I, I, especially if you would have been coming through the time of Harry, you would have seen a real good light. Like, heyday of that sort of era really within like the house music scene the band scene it was just it was full of vibrancy yeah the, I, that's why i couldn't quite get over being in leeds just the, the amount of or the varied amount of music that there was up there um there's a real sort of dub scene kicking off as well um what else like drum and bass there's still sort of, like live drum and bass was kicking off uh just dubstep all that yeah that kind of and then the, but there's a huge jazz scene punk scene Metal scene. There's so many venues, which I think I've heard of. A lot of them closed down now. I've not really, not really been back that often. Um, but it, from what I've heard, it's changed quite significantly. I think it's more down to like, uh, so Cockpit Shut, which was a massive loss because Cockpit yeah. was iconic. That was but, great. Uh, other, venues, other venues like Brood and Ellis still rocking about. I think it's yeah. happening to a lot of places around, really. Yeah, where, yeah. That sort of mid tier, uh, you know, just before a band are on the precipice of like pushing through but they need that like big capacity gig to yeah. you know get them over it and uh yeah i think a few venues have suffered like that yeah yeah so for, yeah cockpit is great that was where you used to go there was a tuesday night punk rock metal night till like three in the morning just playing stupid tunes that you grew up to like <laughs> listening to mtv2 or whatever yeah, yeah that was excellent i used to love it and then did you find that you wanted to, I mean, what was the moves after after College of Music? Were it something where did Leeds ever appeal to stay or did you feel like you, or what you wanted to yeah, do I, you I, to venture away? If, 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 uh, if the sort of the, the sort of main hub of the music scene wasn't in London, I probably would have stayed there. I loved it. Um, you know, it was cheap and cheerful and I had lots of mates who kind of hung around after, after we uh, all graduated. Um, but then it just kind of got to the point where I was sort of hit a threshold and I needed to just get myself to London to try and see what was going on down there. And I had some mates who'd moved already and we're doing quite well in, you know, session scenes and songwriting stuff. And uh, So, yeah, I just followed them down, really. I luckily moved in to where my parents are based in Hertfordshire. So I had kind of like a direct route in and then was just running around trying to find sort of work and auditions or session stuff like wedding gigs blah blah whatever you could get uh and then i got an audition for um tom odell do you know tom odell yeah um and so yeah i became his drummer um managed to get the gig oh, looking... um so would that have been about 2016 time no it's uh, probably 2012 okay yeah he was just just as he was he got signed and um he was looking for a singing drummer uh, and I was like, oh, I can do that. So I managed to sniff out this audition and uh, got the job doing that. Uh, and then, yeah, I then was sort of just being a session drummer mainly at that point, but um, doing a lot of songwriting as well. Um, 
so I did a lot of that at university and studied sort of songwriting specifically in Leeds. Um, and that kind of just led on to eventually getting a publishing deal um, by doing lots of writing and kind of keeping the session thing on the on the back burner and had to sort of stop playing with Tom for a while. Are you still uh, close with Tom? You still mates? Yeah, 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 yeah. We see each other every now and then. He's, um, yeah, I've got in my studio in uh, London, he's just, um, it's a bunch of writing rooms and there's a, a, a like a commercial studio in there. And he just, uh, he was in the other week, just before this whole lockdown thing happened. He was recording his, I think it's his fourth album now. So doing some tracking in there. So I saw him there, see him at people's birthdays and stuff. And yeah, we keep in touch. So before yeah. we before we, we can focus a bit more on that time, uh, because I often wonder the whole hustle of adjusting to life in London. You know, everybody's going down there, they're migrating, they're chasing the same thing. So when you're trying to get yourself known or get yourself seen, it seems like sometimes it, it can be closed off until you get yourself in with a certain scene or crowd or, you know, you, you put your, you, people appreciate what you're offering to then involve you into their, like, collective. Did you yeah. feel anything like that in London? Was there uh, a guarded pressure, really, to sort of break in? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you, yeah, it's, that, it's, it's like anything. Once one door opens, many do, don't they? So... Yeah, I mean, sort of trying to knock down those doors and um, uh, sort of make your way into that sort of secret circle, as they sort of a lot of people think it is. But uh, I mean, yes and no. So some of the circles are tighter than others. But um, no, once you kind of got a name for yourself and uh, you sort of prove it, then it does get a lot easier. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's definitely tough, but just keep keep pers persisting. And that's that's kind of what I found is to yeah keep going with it. Were there any sort of close breaks or close calls that fell through before Tom, before you merged with Tom Adele? Uh, I was, yeah, I was, uh, I was playing with this metal band called Crownsville Defence for a bit just before that. Um, and we were sort of doing these tours. Uh, I was like the session drummer for that. And that, that was kind of like a, we just did a lot of touring and um, some recording. I got flown to Florida to do some tracking and stuff. and um, So that was a bit of a whirlwind. And that was just before I left Leeds. So I thought, oh, here we go. And um, they were sort of suggesting I move to California at one point. And I was like, wow. So I've got to quit everything here and uh, potentially live in America. And then that, it just everything just fell apart. <laughs> nothing, nothing came through that, which luckily for me meant that I could stay in London. And, and, and then I think a few months later, I got the, the Tom audition. So, yeah. So then, did you gravitate from Tom to Liam, or was there a, a, a there's a there, of scarcity? Yeah, there's a link. There's um, it's the same management. Um, so I was doing a lot of work with 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 that management company, um, and it just kind of evolved. Yeah, I was just doing a lot of work with the guy who produced the first time Adele record, which I drummed on. To then, sort of years down the line, um, Liam making a comeback and sort of having to keep it quite hush hush at the time um but me and this this producer dan grek uh were asked to just help liam with some demos and put together what then became the, the first record really so um we we're quite heavily involved in that and then it just it just fell into the <clears throat> the idea that i would be his live drummer and so he just asked he asked me to do that and we got a band together and then that was what four years ago so <laughs> it's still surreal i can see you in your mouth it, like when you like revisit that it must still be a surreal experience to to a have that opportunity but then to be asked if you want to like kick it full time in his band like it must yeah. have been surreal oh no absolutely yeah um no i still i mean obviously we're, we're it's, it's it's less surreal for me now than it used to be um, but initially, yeah, I mean, I couldn't quite, when, when we were first working on the record, it was uh, a bit crazy having, you know, his voice in the room and his songs coming to light and us helping him do that. Um, and it, yeah, it was all very exciting uh, at the time. Uh, yeah, no, I still sort of pinch myself. Like when we're doing crazy gigs, and like, wow, he's pretty, pretty incredible. When you were writing for him at that period, and I don't know how that this question will sound, but I hope you sort of get it because he's such a pivotal vocalist. Do you write with his voice in mind? Um, I, I've sent him some ideas. Actually, the, fir the first record uh, 
and the second that they, none, none, I didn't actually write anything. I was just quite heavily involved in sort of playing a lot of the instruments and helping put the demos together. And then um, the the album came out of that. But no, I've I've been I've been writing with him in mind, and he's, he's he has asked me to write him some things for sort of things down the line if this this whole thing this coronavirus thing <laughs> goes away and we start making a third record then yeah you never know there might be something that, of the writing that comes out of that um but yeah of course i write with his voice in mind yeah you kind of have to it's just so iconic that's what i'm saying it just must be it must be crazy it must be crazy i mean i'm guessing you've seen uh the film back up because i it was all going to be obvious that you were going to be in the film but when i saw you i was like of course <laughs> was that weird, like, seeing that whole, like, period documented and seeing how it played out? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, being at the premiere and just sort of watching back so you hadn't seen the final cut or the film at all. Um, we were sat with all the band and just kind of <laughs> just remembering things that happened. We're like, oh, yeah, 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 remember that crazy gig we did? Or, yeah, just seeing all the footage as a, a diary of the last, what, what it would have been, what, two and a half years of the comeback. Um yeah, it's pretty surreal seeing it all, and yeah, really, really a nice feeling to think you we're all involved in that in that um, process. Yeah. When uh, I was watching the film, one thing that became sort of like a subplot or the narrative, which I didn't really take at the at the start of it, because I just thought he's back. It's amazing. It's gonna smash it. But was there really like a nervousness around if it would connect? Because I just thought it would be a given. But what that really came across in the film of like are people going to want it as much as they are? And when it did, you could see almost the relief, but the, like, the gratitude towards the success that it had had. Yeah, no, yeah, you're completely right. Uh, I don't think anyone in, in any part of the um, the team, you know, management label, even Le- Liam, sorry, or Debbie, really thought it would be as enormous as it was. Um, I think, I mean, you know, it was kind of the guarantee that the, the people were gagging for Liam to come back. <clears throat> Um, but I think with the, you know, the way that BDI kind of didn't quite peak as the, the way they wanted it to, they, they, I don't think they're having as a huge a hope than, than what actually did occur. Um, yeah, I mean, even us as the band, we're just kind of watching it all happen in front of us and riding the wave. We're just like, I can't quite believe that how quickly this is becoming enormous. <laughs> it's just uh, pretty fascinating from our point of view as well. Were there any particular gigs? One that stands out for me is uh, when you played before Blossoms at uh, Leeds Best. So you would have been doing Leeds and Reading. I think it might have been. Yeah. It was, was it 2017 or 18? It was Conor McGregor played May of the year. I remember you were on the Friday yeah. in Leeds. Yeah, and that, Sabian were on the Saturday. Yeah, that's right. But, but that seemed like a gig where it was like, statement, I'm back. Like, were there any ones that sort of jump out at you where, you know, along this, like, almost momentum, it turns into this juggernaut and, like, it's just eclipsed again? I think, the, I mean, the, the One Love concert is probably one of the biggest landmarks. <laughs> um, yeah, even though that was very early on, I think we'd only done about six gigs, five or six gigs at that point. And did, and because of the situation, obviously, was he in Hamburg or were you all at different places and you'd all specifically flown in for it? No, we were we were playing a I can't remember where in Germany it was, um, but it was a festival, and um, it, you know it was very last minute. We got asked, well, we I mean the general we got asked to do this, <laughs> um, and we had to move the festival set to earlier on in the day. Um, and get off stage and get flown into Manchester. Um, we arrived pretty much about 45 minutes to an hour before we were supposed to go on. So no um, sound check or anything? You just No, said. no, no. So so we were just jumping. We it's basically like a pub gig where we were borrowing Coldplay's gear, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so to just run on and just, just, just move things around and just like, just go for it. So when you see, if you watch the footage back, you've got like, I think there's like a, a scene of a, the helicopters filming the crowd and you can kind of hear us hitting things and just making sure the amps work and things like that. And just, <laughs> like, it's just, yeah, it's pretty scary. Um, well, that's one that very early on you felt it because that's oh, the yeah. thing I'd say about um, being in the, around the realm of Liam, shall we say, is like when he's on song, like it's a vacuum, you sucked into it. And, you know, you obviously from our side of it, 
that's us sending you a lot of that energy, but mm -hmm. you receiving that was that was definitely a turning point then that gig. Yeah, I just the, the 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 yeah the enormity of that and the kind of how important that that gig was and how much Liam made sure that we did play it and we you know the last minute nature of just making sure that we got there and the importance of it all was just like a wow this is something pretty important and something that will change his career and 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 give him that comeback that he truly deserved I guess um yeah. What's it like when you're prepping a set list and you have the battle of, obviously, the allure of putting Oasis songs in, but now two albums in, finding that balance, like, is, is, you know, is, can that be quite a struggle? Uh, yeah, it's, it's mostly down to, I mean, Liam chooses the set, so it's, it's up to him. Um, but yeah, we balance it out. We like, definitely balance it out. Um, and usually gauge what, you know, Oasis songs are kicking off, or even his his own songs are, you know, working well. And that 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 usually does rotate. We have certain things that do stay in there that we know definitely work. But we'll we'll we'll, do, we'll you know sometimes we have discussions like that that tune was kicking off last night. Let's try it again tonight. Um, yeah, no, it, 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 it yeah, it, the, the set kind of roughly stays the same, but varies from gig to gig, and you know, depending on how we're getting on with that tour. And then. I remember at Glastonbury, the one just gone, where I'd not heard you do Columbia before, and Columbia just pops out, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> you're just in a conversation, and you're just like, right, we're going to do this, and you're like, what? We're going to, like, play, like, Columbia. It, it just it just blows my mind. Like, you've got this... Because <laughs> yeah. for me, like, obviously, you can see him there, man. Like, Yeah, I can see him the, right the, there. The, the, the my boys, do you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. right? The my boys, and, like, the role, the soundtrack, like, they created the soundtrack to some of the greatest forming forming memories of my of my of my like young adult life and then beyond. You know, it's like I walk yeah. with the spirit of them because yeah. of what they what they gave to us and I'm just like some of them songs mean so much, but to be in a conversation where, right, we're going out on Pyramid Stage after Janet Jackson, which is random in its own self <laughs> yeah, that was and we're gonna play <laughs> Columbia. It's just like, I'd just like to maybe get a bit more of a, an in-depth uh, response trailer with when you're going over such iconic songs, mm. it does, it, it, you're in the moment, but there must be a time when you're like, I've just played Supersonic to 78,000 people at Pyramid Stage. Thank you. Sure, yeah. Much. Yeah. No, that, that, that definitely has an effect. And that um, it does kind of... Um, it numbs itself out a little bit the more you do it, <clears throat> for sure. I mean, we, we you know, we, we played the songs like hundreds and hundreds of times to this point. Like some of the, the ones we kept, set, you know, like Rock and Roll Style, she opened with, you know, that's probably one of my favourites to play, as is Columbia, weirdly. Um, but no, we, I mean, we do rehearse, we rehearse these songs, or sometimes, um, and very, um, very rarely we've had to, we have had to learn maybe a song in the sound check. Um, if Liam decides, you know, we're playing that tonight. So we, we deal with that uh, sometimes, yeah. So so it can keep us, can, that can keep us on our toes or luckily maybe we'll chuck in an old song that we've not played for a while. Um, but yeah, the, the yeah, it's quite, it's quite amazing playing those iconic songs. Uh, and even seeing the, the varied range of age that you kind of have reactions from. Um, so that that's more that's more interesting for us if playing like Morning Glory, which is older than some you know most of the kids in the front row. It's like, where's that coming from? Like, why why are you so in, interested in music that's y your generation previous? Um, so yeah, it's, it's fascinating the way that Oasis have just connected to to every age range and in, in, well, especially in the UK, but I mean the whole, like across the world, it's, it's pretty bonkers. Yeah. Well, I've seen someone put in uh, the comments that are you, you know, you're going to be going back to Brazil, and I've seen you were playing La Palooza a few times. Like, <clears throat> what's it like when you? What is the response like when you're abroad, like in places like Brazil or Argentina? Well, South America is is, is bonkers. Yeah, uh, yeah. South South America is like we're One Direction or something. Like. <laughs> <laughs> They even know our names, all about the band names. They like come out of the airport and they're, they're screaming for us too. We're just like, what are you on about? <laughs> but 
which is yeah it's incredible um yeah especially like so south america J japan is insane they're kind of very similar um and then yeah no it varies from 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 place to place like america uh i mean it kind of goes with the whole oasis apparently you know never broke america but you, you sort of do feel it a little bit there that we're sort of well liam's a little bit lesser known so it's like like any artist in the world really you, you sort of have your your well-known continents and you and ones that don't really know about you so much um so, we're, so it means that the gigs are hugely varied as well you know how's how's uh gene on drums he's great He's Are you giving like, him little pointers as well and stuff then? Sure, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, when we learned the river together, we were sort of figuring out what to do and we thought it'd be better for him to have like a more broken down kit so it didn't kind of, um, you know, too much noise going on in one go. But no, he's great. He's fearless, that kid. Yeah, I love Jake. He just, he couldn't care less. <laughs> just like his dad. <laughs> well, he appears to not care that much. <clears throat> and uh, I suppose the final one from me then, and thank you for your time and the chat, is uh, once all this is done, what do you think, again, back on the road or album number three, what's the sort of next trajectory? Where do you see it going? I think we've got a lot of gigs to uh, redo. Uh, from, well, from what I've heard, there's a lot of festivals are going to try and um, rebook everything for later in the year or maybe next year. I don't, I don't know any of the... Um, the real answers to that but yeah there's a lot of gigs you've got to finish you know got some unfinished business <laughs> and then yeah i don't know i think uh potentially another album who knows um i'm not too sure what the plan is as yet but because we're just going to be on the road for the rest of the year so we'll see see what actually how that pans out and where we are after all the gigs are done and if we need another break or not perfect yeah. perfect i'm <laughs> sure you will mate i'm sure you'll be back in studio yeah, watching them squirrels so. running away from dogs in park. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but Dan, what a gent. Thank you for your time and thank no you worries. for uh, just being so open and having a chat with us and uh, stay safe through this time and no doubt when we're at the other side of it, I'll catch you <laughs> for a bev. Absolutely, man. You take cool. it easy, Thanks brother. Thanks for having me. Peace. Bye. How do I get out of it? <laughs> I'll log you off. <laughs> You thought he were trapped in it forever then. Uh, no, thank you everybody who's come through on the actual chat. And uh, sorry if I weren't able to get any of your questions put in, but thank you for uh, yeah just being present and tuned in. That was, of course, Dan, drummer Liam Gallagher's band uh, on the road. I wanted to find out a bit more about his story, his background, and how he came into being in uh, the position that he's in. So I hope you got a bit more of an insight into Dan as well as a bit of a, a segue in uh, Liam as well, as you can tell. He's definitely in my heart. He's LG and Noel as well, to be fair. The Oasis boys, 100%. But no, thank you. If you're new to what I'm doing, I'm Ben Random. This is Loose Lips. And uh, I produce a series of chats with varying guests just to put across optimism. Obviously, it's a, a bit of a crazy time that we're in at the minute. But I hope that these chats can help you escape, find out a bit more about other people's lives and a bit of inspiration to hang on to. And uh, we will get through this together and be better for it at the other side. So stay safe, stay cool. I've got another chat coming up at um, six o'clock, which is with DJ producer Ralph Lawson. He is a successful underground DJ uh, with the record level 2020 vision and also uh, a festival in Leeds, a creative festival called Inner City Electronic. So if you're interested in that, add me on Instagram at Ben Random, and then you can find out that chat in a bit. But thank you all for your comments. Stay safe, stay cool, peace and light.